Of all mythical deities, Lord Shiva has to be one of the coolest. Not only did this guy invent yoga, he's also historically been responsible for protecting humanity from any number of torrential, destructive forces that have come our way. Shiva led River Ganja from the heavens to its current path using only his hair, and his dance can destroy the cosmos so that it can be born again. There are very few deities that embody the destructive yet benevolent eternal force of nature to catastrophically reset, but then welcome in a new era of worthy life forms than Lord Shiva. And with this oft blue deity comes the snake seen around his neck, Vasuki Nag, one of the major points of focus during the day of Naga Panchami, when the Naga cobras and snakes are worshipped. And so, the story of the largest snake known to science, named fittingly after Shiva's right-hand man, is more than just the story of a powerful being's necklace. It's the story of how life is death and destruction is rebirth. And it all begins with a very big rock. Dinosaurs did a fantastic job of dominating the land, particularly during the unprecedented climatic stability of the Cretaceous, and they were even showing signs of branching out into new territory, with species taking to the air and even the water, until a tragic cosmic coincidence reset this planet's life forms and ushered in a new generation of overlords. In the 10 million years following the Cretaceous extinction event, one of the largest snakes to have ever appeared showed up in the form of Titanoboa. As the name suggests, this was a very large boa, a relative of the enormous anacondas that still skulk in the waters of South America today. This snake could have grown from around 12 to 14 meters long and perhaps weighed over a ton. As you probably know, it was the reigning, defending, largest snake known to science from 2009 to 2024, an impressive 15 years at the top of the rankings, but it had taken the spot off a very different animal. The previous record holder, the 11-meter Gigantophis Gostini, had been in this spot since 1901, and this is very apt for what was a member of the longest-lasting snake family there ever was. The Matsoide family of snakes shows up in the fossil record around the same time as Spinosaurus in the late Cretaceous. This is a family that evolved on the supercontinent Gondwana, and they rode about on the tectonic plates for around a hundred million years, coming to occupy South America, Africa, India, Australia, and Europe. Gigantophis gastini was perhaps on the upper end of the size spectrum for this family, but Matsoids began their approach much smaller, with species ranging only up to about a meter long, and they were likely useful food for pterosaurs and carnivorous dinosaurs of the time. But when Lord Shiva dances, things get shuffled around, and 66 million years ago, he was really shaking it. When the dust settled, a new generation of constrictors arose to compete with the Matsoids, the Boas. These snakes are still incredibly successful today, and they're found over much of the world, particularly in South America, where the largest of the lot is the green anaconda, at around 8.5 meters long, and well over 200 kilos in weight. This is the heaviest extant snake, and one of the longest, but it's outshone in this department by the reticulated python, whose record stands at just under 10 meters. Pythons, like boas, are more modern varieties of snakes. Both use the tried and tested matsoid constriction approach to killing, but unlike Gigantophis and their family members, boas and pythons have the updated jaw models wider, more flexible, and better for swallowing food whole. While pythons and boas look remarkably alike, they share an ancestor as far back as 70 million years ago. And the two lions exhibit some of the most conspicuous examples of convergent evolution that it's possible to gawk at. Just looking at a comparison between the emerald tree boa and the green tree python is enough to make you question how an omnipotent creator could possibly have run out of ideas and is copy-pasted the same design in a different place. But back to the Maxoids. While Boas put forth a worthy contender in Titanoboa in the Paleocene, this snake's reign wasn't all that long. Ten million years after the Cretaceous ended, Shiva was at it again, this time with rapid onset global warming. 
an increase in up to 9 degrees Celsius in just 20,000 years. For whatever unknown and complicated ecological reason, Titanoboa was out and Gigantophis gustini was in. It swam about around 40 million years ago in a warm, shallow sea that no longer exists, one that once covered part of the Sahara during the Eocene. While this was indeed a large snake, at the same time, on the other side of the planet, India was still floating about as a lonely island, having not yet collided with mainland Asia to form the Himalayas. And on this enormous island, an even larger snake, possibly bigger than Titanoboa itself, was evolving. Lord Shiva is commonly known as the Blue-Throated One. This nickname comes from back in Shiva's wilder days, when he and the other gods were trying to solve some demonic issues by bringing up the elixir of life from the ocean. But to get it out, they needed to churn the ocean, and the head of the Nagas at the time, a half-cobra, half-human called Vasuki, volunteered to be the churning implement. Unfortunately, it didn't go to plan, and the ocean brought forth a torrent of poison, threatening to kill everyone on Earth, so Shiva stepped in and took one for the team, downing the poison to save the world. It didn't kill him, but it did make him quite blue. Still, he ended up making the partnership with Vasuki, and this is why Shiva's often depicted as having the snake around his neck. So when vertebrae from perhaps the largest snake ever recorded were dug up in Gujarat, the name fitted well, not just because it's a fun Indian legend to tack onto a new snake, but also because the new genus seemed to fall somewhere before Gigantophis on the phylogenetic tree, but even more so because its very discovery is analogous with the role that Vasuki and other Nagas played in guarding ancient wisdom, subterranean treasures, and wealth concealed within nature. Vasuki Indicus was originally discovered in 2005, and the specimen was comprised of 27 vertebrae. Interestingly, there are also 27 main beads in some of the Buddhist mala necklaces and 27 lunar mansions in Hindu astrology. Coincidence? Yes, they're completely unrelated. But don't let that take away from how awesome this discovery was and how there could have been no better name for this snake than Vasuki Indicus, the namesake of the powerful Naga leader that rests around the neck of the destroyer, guarding buried secrets and facilitating extinction, rebirth, recycling, and new life. And indeed, Vasuki held on to its own secrets from its unearthing in 2005, all the way up until 2024 when its bones were reinvestigated. At the time of its discovery, they were thought to have been from some kind of mysterious crocodilian and thrown in a drawer somewhere for someone else to deal with later. And around 20 years after that, someone did. A pair of researchers, Sunil Bajpai and Debajit Datta, described what they called a lineage of exceptionally large-bodied matsoids, and they put forward the theory that the northerly aquatic giant, Gigantophis gustini, was one of a branch of a family of snakes that originated on the Indian subcontinent and migrated to Africa via southern Eurasia during the Eocene. So Vasuki was not only the largest, but also perhaps the oldest of its kind. And with estimates of up to 15 meters, it was maybe even longer than the infamous Titanoboa. Much like the longest snakes today, Vasuki may not have been the heaviest and was perhaps slenderer than the enormous boa, but there are plenty of other factors that could have made the snake a lot more frightening. For one, recent advancements in the understanding of Titanoboa suggest that this was primarily a fish eater. The mouth, densely packed with multiple needle-like teeth, was almost perfect for such a diet. Conversely, while there's no skull to draw upon from Fasuki Indicus, its known relatives point to this giant having a far less specialized skull shape, a narrower head, yet robust teeth that resemble those of the larger-mouthed snakes. If this implies a monster snake with a hankering for large prey, but a head too small to swallow it, things get a little weird. Modern snakes have a kinetic skull, which allows them to jaw-walk across their food, essentially dragging their bodies over their meals like a tight pair of terrible jeans over a swollen leg. But Matsoids didn't have this, so how did Vasuki eat? There are a few options. One is that it simply ate smaller food, which for a snake this huge would have meant eating more frequently, but this is possible if it was a sit-and-wait ambush predator. 
We may be able to look to the moray eel for another option, though it almost doesn't bear thinking about. So before we do, we'd just like to say thanks for watching. And if you're enjoying the video, please get the subscribe button to see the next one and give us a like to help us boost it up the rankings. Now, contrary to popular belief, constrictors don't strangle or suffocate their prey exactly. Instead, constriction compresses the body so much that the blood cannot pass through the vessels at all, and the brain is quickly starved of oxygen while the heart stalls under pressure. Constriction pressure can also force blood into the head, causing brain damage. And a snake the size of Vasuki would have been a terrifyingly powerful squeezer. It also would have found itself surrounded by the weird mammalian fauna that evolved on the insular Indian island while it was separated from the mainland. And if moray eels are anything to draw upon, Vasuki may have fed by tying itself in knots and ripping chunks out of its victims. A tear and rip feeding strategy would go hand in hand with the plentiful grip and hold teeth and the impressive ability to squeeze. Vasuki was likely the largest predator of its kind in its range, so it wouldn't have had to worry about anything stealing its kill. In Hindu tradition, the legend of Vasuki represents many applicable things here. He's linked to eternity and cosmic balance. And if we can cast a wider net to serpent worship in general, we can include the interrelatedness of different systems. So could it be that Vasuki Indicus, this imposing terrestrial threat, played a role in chasing a small group of artiodactyls off the Indian island and back into the ocean? Around 350 million years after their ancestors fled the ocean onto the land to avoid the monsters in the sea, a small group of terrestrial vertebrates got homesick and evolved into the cetaceans, moving back into the water. And it's thought that they did this in India. Perhaps several million years of sharing their island with the world's scariest snake was enough to persuade them. And under the guidance of Lord Shiva, the death brought on by this snake would facilitate a new vertebrate presence in the ocean, a continuation of life from one realm into another. The two starkly different biomes interconnected by the serpent Vasuki. We aren't likely to ever know for sure, and with only a single fossil of Vasuki Indicus currently on record, the Naga Lord still guards plenty of secrets hidden in the earth. What we do know is the Matsoids went extinct sometime around the late Pleistocene, long after India crashed into Asia, and late enough that they had apparently spread all over the place by then. They appear to have gradually faded away, with most recent fossils coming from Australia from around 50,000 years ago. And it's from many of these fossils that a recognition of the similarity between the Matsoid and the Varanid teeth is being studied. Varanids are monitor lizards, and with so much confusion and scant evidence around the origin of these two branches, perhaps it's up to Vasuki to one day grant us insights into the buried secrets of this connection. Meanwhile, in the wake of the Matsoid extinction, and as a consequence of Lord Shiva's most recent reshuffling at the end of the Pleistocene, pythons have come to dominate many of the old Matsoid niches. Today, the largest snake contest is an analogue of the Titanoboa of the Suki standoff, with an exceptionally long snake pitted against an outrageously heavy one. But as history has shown, continually, it's only a matter of time until Shiva gets bored, the deck is reshuffled, and new contenders emerge, both from the fossils of the past and the ecosystems of the future. As times change, heroes come and go, and nature, just like history, continuously reinvents itself. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.